Hello everybody and welcome to Let's Play Legends of Eidolon episode 1. Um, this is a fresh start. Uh, I will go into what that means throughout this tutorial and throughout the first like four episodes of this series. Right here I'm just showcasing the tutorial. It's something I didn't show the first like the first time I you know did my series uh, as a lot of you may know. Um, I'm just showing the secret from the tutorial which is the first secret of the game so just keep that in mind. So basically all you have to do is get to the second room um, you can go back to this room and the secret keeper will appear there, but you don't really need to do that yet. You can just mine the starlight ore and the alien tree. Uh, you just need a bunch of resources to make like three or, yeah, three Arcanite Reapers. No wait, Arcanite Reapers, that's a different game. <laughs> uh, basically the, uh, Flesh Reapers or Rippers or whatever the hell they're called. Um, you need one for yourself and you need... Uh, two for the secret stone. So I decided to start over for a few reasons. Um, most notably, I didn't really like how the quality of my videos were. Um, you know, for starters. Uh, one of the other things is I kind of had an unfair advantage unknowingly um, because not only was I an alpha tester at the time, uh, which means I got to play, you know, patches weeks before they were out. But I would also, or uh, when I first started, I also had a talent that was bugged. I didn't really abuse it too much, but I was kind of unknowing. I was doing live commentary at the time, and it wasn't really something that was, like, catching my attention. So, in the grand scheme of things, it, it didn't really matter, but it always kind of just bugged me that it happened, and I didn't really notice it. First off, it's still my main account, and I still, you know, buy all the packs and everything. Um, it's probably something I will end up streaming occasionally here and there. Uh, this will probably be, you know, my YouTube series, and then whatever I stream on YouTube will most likely be that account. Um, just kind of, you know, showing around and, you know, keeping everybody informed on that progress. So over the last month, since I pretty much you know, haven't made any content over that last month. I've been thinking a lot about, you know, the direction I want to take, especially this account, because I knew I wanted to start over um, with the series and just on a fresh account, um, back to square one. And one of the rules I kind of made myself was no spending, like, real life money, because I have spent a few hundred dollars, give or take, on my main account. And uh, I just kind of want to prove that you don't really need to make money, or not make money, to spend money to make it in this game. Um, I, I'm not saying I'm going to be like top 10%, but you definitely, you know, get what you put in. And just, I mean, this first day, the first four episodes of this series is just day one of me kind of grinding things out. Um, and that's kind of the next thing I want to touch on is the scope of this series. Later in the series, it'll definitely be broadened, but right now it's kind of minute, and I, I really do want to show like every step of the way, even if it's boring and everybody's seen it, because you know this isn't about just you know you guys right now or me. I definitely want future, you know, people that watch this that have never really played the game or picked it up, I want them to understand what to kind of do and, you know, formulate their own plans and, you know, their own decisions, but, you know, basically understand, you know, this is how you do this, but at the same time, you know, this is what I'm doing on my second character, you know, right now, even though I kind of showed it earlier type of thing. And you'll definitely notice in this, you know, in these first four episodes, that I like heavily influence checking the anvil because early on you don't have any capacity and you're definitely going to need the levels a lot sooner rather than later. I mean right now like we've already spent like four or five minutes in the tutorial and it's basically just me talking while I just do this secret is what I'm kind of trying to get at. I just want to show people exactly what to do and not just like edit the crap out of it and then be like, here you go. Like I'm well aware 
that I'll still get questions about, you know, generic things like Baba Yaga and when does it spawn and where does it spawn and how do you get this? Um, you know, I'm, I'm prepared for that. I kind of always have been. I've answered to the same questions, you know, like a hundred times already. Uh, probably even more than that. Uh, that's not something that I'm, you know, afraid of. And I know I'm kind of scatterbrained right now and, you know, I'm kind of ping-ponging everywhere, uh, every which way. But back to, like, the whole rules thing, uh, I'm not going to participate in any, like, uh, free gem contests or giveaways, uh, drop party stuff, nothing like that. Also, this is just me turning in the Secret Keeper quest. Um, I was going to limit myself to only soloing a guild, but now that there's, like, party dungeons, you know, going to be coming in the future and whatnot, I, I've decided that I'm just gonna wait to join a guild until I basically can unlock one my you know myself so by the time I get to the desert when I get to the desert rather that's when I'll be allowed to join a guild um, and I'll be able to do things like you know King Do and you know join a guild and do party stuff eventually um, so yeah there's that uh, I do want to say that I'm allowed to like do events and whatnot so long as it's basically in the game, I will be able to do it. Uh, events are a good source of gems, which is why I kind of bring them up. So I, I feel like I'll be allowed to do those. Which is kind of funny bringing that up, because as I'm looking through the footage, I had a hard time trying to kill the uh, the sand uh, dugs or whatever the hell they're called. The, the shovels. So when I was creating my account, I made an email, a Gmail, I logged into it, and there was already a uh, an Eidolon account connected to it, which was really funny. Um, I got a kick out of that. No OG title though, I was just kind of checking it. Um, I thought that was really funny, so I recorded it. Uh, this is just me kind of showing off the summer break patch, which is I believe the first day was when I was recording this. <coughs> Sorry for the voice crack. Um, I'm just kind of scrolling through the patch notes for anybody that just wants to kind of pause and peruse them at their leisure. And with this series, I'm not trying to go fast or play catch up really. I know I'm very far behind, um, which is, and, and you'll kind of notice that because, you know, when I hit level 8 on my first character, I don't instantly sit there and just make my second character. I don't make my second character until like I'm level 11, I think. Uh, there's a few reasons. I've been, you know, theory crafting what classes I want, and I definitely want to do something different than I did on my first account. Uh, I do tell stories with the names, and I try to make personalities around them, and I'll go into that later. Uh, this, the game's about to kind of begin, and I want to go over that right now. Uh, first off, I thought it was really funny that my name wasn't picked up, so I ended up just going with that. Oh, well, it's not like you can change it. But right here, I, you know, start the Scripticus quest line. Um, I do pick up the Mr. Piggy Bank, which is the Stamps quest line, and the Marble, which is the Statue quest line. Um, I don't pick up the Crow, because there's no real reason for it right now. Uh, I'll pick it up later. But like I've said, and I want to reiterate, you know, starting your Anvil early is, like, the key to success for early game Eidolon. Um, it's... It gives you free talent points when you level it up. Um, crafting res or not recipes, uh, crafting materials needed for a lot of things. It's just something to do early on that you will really regret if you don't. And there'll be many clips of me just kind of showcasing my anvil and my smithing level and whatnot. Um, like I said, the scope of this series is going to broaden as it goes on, but early on it's definitely going to be uh, step by step. So right here I am killing the mushrooms or the spores, I need to kill five of them, and I'm showcasing the summer event right now, which just started the day I was recording this. Also, uh, before I go back to the uh, summer thing, uh, make sure to follow on Twitter and do the whole Discord thing, uh, it'll net you a hundred gems, which the first thing I'm going for is the Golden Anvil. Uh, but back to the whole summer thing, uh, the first week you do get like 50% uh, bonus, and I was thinking about holding off um, to, you know, making the series and stuff, 
but I had been holding off for a while already, and to be honest, I didn't know there was going to be like a 50% thing, uh, you know, buff. And it only lasts a week, I think. Um, and also, getting past 50, or getting 250 is not that hard. So right here, I'm just showing like the chat box and using my insta reses accordingly, because as a beginner, you get like 10 of them, so you might as well use them when you, you know, have them. So I chose the propeller hat. It gives plus one luck. Not that that matters too much. Um, I end up selling it. I I saved all of the like beginner hats for a long time, but they're just kind of a waste of bank space, to be honest. They're not anything special or crazy. So for my star sign, I ended up going with the wisdom and one percent uh, class exp. I usually go with the the luck and the talent points, but I'm gonna try really hard not to go negative um, in like my anvil or my talent points on this account because it just kind of sucks. Also, these coolers are something you get when you you have a random chance to get a cooler drop whenever you kill an enemy. Uh, it's a part of the event. Uh, I ended up getting a time candy, a one hour time candy on my first one, which is pretty nice. Right now, I don't have a plan for them, and I will probably just save them for something in the future. Right now, I would probably save them for the Maestro class, because getting those skills up on a journeyman is kind of a pain in the ass, so that'll probably be something I save all them for. And right here, I'm just kind of continuing with the quests. Um, I end up just selling the propeller hat right now and dragging and dropping things just to kind of see what the sell price is for things. Uh, this series will definitely be just on PC only. Um, it'll allow me to kind of show everybody th things easier with the visual representation of a mouse. But back to the time candy thing, I ended up... Oh, also right here, uh, I just ended up getting the daily. Uh, basically, you just have to open 12 coolers, and then you'll pretty much get more coolers and oysters, which the oysters drop pearls, and I'll kind of go into it when, you know, they all drop and whatnot. But yes, back to the time candy thing. Um, I ended up using a few hundred hours worth of time candy I saved on my main account, basically just for catching and card farming. Also, you can go into the sewers uh, if nobody knew about that. Um, it's pretty late game, though, for World 1. And uh, it was something that I didn't really regret, but at the time, I was waiting for World 3 to come out, and time candies didn't even really work on World 3 skills for the most part, so it's not like it was a tr you know, true waste. But it definitely would have been beneficial to have all that time candy for uh, getting the maestro stuff. Uh, that's neither here nor there, and I'm not gonna sit here and be spoiler free. like. I'm going to show things as I get to them, like the bolt cutters and everything, so when I get to them, I will show them uh, easily. But basically, I ended up doing Glumly stuff, which is that goblin right there, before it's intended, just to kind of get it out of the way. Uh, right here, the first quest, you need to mine five copper ore, so it's pretty self-explanatory. And then his second one is you need to produce a bar, also talents. Um, I'm putting pretty much everything into Sharpened Axe, and if I don't show my talents very often, basically it's just me putting everything into Sharpened Axe, so don't worry about it. And if I deviate from that, I will show you. Uh, right here I'm just kind of clicking on things, mainly inventory stuff, seeing what's, you know, what's what. Uh, you know, kind of acquainting myself with the new account feel. Also, as I'm recording this, I just noticed that his little gold rock has a little smiley face on it, and I've never noticed that this entire time. Right here, I end up using the tutorial oil to get this bar super quick, but it does sell for like 3 silver, and I do end up selling my second one for my second character, just to kind of show you an easy way to make some quick silver early on. Uh, I have shown it in the past, but, you know, I don't have those videos anymore. <laughs> Uh, so right here, you have to upgrade the forge three times, which, like I said, if you sold the uh, oil, you'd have enough to pay for that. So we're kind of stuck on that right now. 
Uh, we'll get that done sooner though, rather than later. And right here we need to, the next quest in Scripticus's quest line is we need to unlock that portal. So we have to kill 45 of these scumbag spores and uh, open that portal. So I'll be back when that's done. Right here, this is the first, I guess, blueberry crab cake thing. I ended up getting the card and another cooler, and I also ended up forgetting to show the pearl that dropped in order to spawn the crab cake. Uh, right here, I just get a upgrade tool, which uh, on a new character is pretty good. So a few of the pearls that you can get are like for fishing and mining speeds. Uh, there's an experience one, and then there's the black pearl, which gives you 20% in any skill that's lower than 30. 20% uh, to the next level, so definitely uh, trying to get those would be really good. Uh, right here, I show the card off, which I think is my first card. Uh, gives you total drop rate, and I equip it because, you know, there's nothing else to equip. Uh, right here, I just kind of showcase the card bonuses and sets. And the more cards you get in a set, plus the uh, level of the cards, give you higher bonuses for those sets. Uh, I'll go over it more in depth when you know I start farming cards. So right here, I'm just showcasing my anvil again, making sure you know I'm keeping up with it, and I'm just kind of leveling it up with the some of the, uh, some of the spore caps. So one of the next quests for Scripticus is to create a farmer brim and a or an orange tea. Uh, I'm definitely lacking the wood. I haven't actually like chopped a tree yet, so I'm gonna get on that grind right here. So the first quest in the woodsman's quest line is just to chop ten oak logs. Uh, that basically gives you, I believe, an axe the uh, like rusty axe or whatever it's called and right here I just kinda showed off that I'm currently on Cog World 8 and for some reason on the PC you can't favorite worlds uh, so that'll probably be the world I'm always on on this character or this account I should say and also this is just me turning in the first quest of the woodsman's quest line uh, the second quest he wants I believe a hundred logs now and I was mistaken before, you don't get the axe yet, you get the, uh, the capacity upgrade, which upgrades your capacity basically from 10 to 25, so, you know, that's really good early on. So right here I'm kind of going through Scripticus' quest line still. Um, the next quest after, you know, a few of his quests or whatever, he wants you to spend talent points, which I had already done. And now this would be the time to go and get your Glumly certification, which is in the mining area. Also, this is the first inventory uh, bag slot upgrade, which you can pretty much only get from, uh, I guess, tasks uh, later on after you unlock it. But basically just from that, you have to unlock it at least once though on one character. And I finally had enough money to finish the quest, which was upgrading the furnace three times. His next quest, you need uh, level 11 mining, so I can't do that yet. Right here, I'm just getting level 3 mining because I'm super close to it. You do also get the mining capacity upgrade bag from one of his quests. I believe it was the certification quest, which again, it goes from 10 to 25 for minerals and bars. When I was chopping that tree, that was a little bit kind of what I did with the mining area where I kind of got ahead of myself and just kind of did some other things uh, before the quest uh, that I needed to do it for. So finally we need to make the orange tea and the farmer's brim. Uh, I don't think I make it for a while because right now it's not that important or imperative to do it. So I ended up trying to upgrade this uh, like rusty pick or junk pickaxe with the um, tool upgrade stone, but I forgot it doesn't have any uh, upgrade uh, slots, if you want to call them that. So, 
I wasted some time doing that. I ended up just kind of sitting here until I got four mining so I could equip it just to kind of save space in my inventory which is pretty limited right now. So here I am again uh, just doing some anvil stuff because I, I did spend a, a little bit mining. But like I said before, I, I do kind of show off my anvil and when I do it just to kind of give people ideas of when they should. So right here I'm in my settings menu and I'm turning things on and off. Uh, I usually don't have the quest helper on because it just kind of blocks a lot of my screen real estate. Um, and I just usually open up the codex when I need to. And I usually have the two times player uh, tap to see on when I need it for like a daily or something. But other than that it's usually off. Also if you can hear the rain in the background I'm sorry for that. Uh, right here I'm just kind of going through the gem store because I didn't do it in the first place. I did say that the first thing I want to buy is the golden anvil and we're at about 103 gems right now uh, towards that and it costs 300 so we're getting there and I'm just kind of like clicking on things showcasing them a little bit. I'll definitely go into it more uh, you know, as I buy things and as I accumulate gems and whatnot and as we go in this series. You know, if you're liking this series, uh, you know, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, thanks for sticking around. Um, you know, it's... It means a lot to me. Uh, right here, I ended up just doing the first daily quest, which is the cooler one. And I ended up getting another card with it, which is the uh, Coastal Light. Uh, it's just a fishing card. Uh, it's not relevant right now, but it definitely will have a good use later on. Uh, I ended up picking up the second one, not that I'm able to complete it anytime soon. Uh, as you can see, I have a fair amount of spore caps on my on my person. Um, it, you know, I was I was sitting there for a little bit, kind of grinding them. So you notice that I got a decent amount of coolers and oysters from completing that daily. So my thought process here was I was going to go up here and I was just going to summon them all and kill them all. So that's definitely not what happens. I get my ass kicked here. Um, mainly by the only things that can hit me which are the uh, blueberry crab cakes. Um, the sand dugs don't hit me. Also I got the summer shell right here which is amazing for you know a new character uh, gives me four percent experience and I do end up using the stones on it and get an extra three defense on it so that's really good for right now uh, but the the sand dugs they don't actually hit me but I can't hit them and as you notice uh, I got all those pearls too for opening them up uh, I did end up burning through all of my uh, insta reses here trying to kill them uh, but I had to just like leave the map because it was kind of affecting my auto. I would go up there and then just start attacking them. But uh, like I said, I did end up killing the blueberry crab cakes. So this is the end of the first episode. Um, it's good to be back. And, you know, thanks for everybody sticking around and waiting, being patient and, you know, watching. Uh, it means a lot to me. If you have any questions, you know, leave them, leave them in the comments below. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll see you around. Also, look at me die. <laughs>